Radiant Church presents Radiant Stories, a collection of stories that showcase God's faithfulness to take our hopeless situations and craft them into beautiful testimonies of His power, provision, and love. that well but <laughs> we got to know this, this podcast is for <laughs> and our listeners they really yes. want those deets <laughs> usually they just tune in for the last five minutes we just minutes. give the people what they want <laughs> we are here today with sean and natasha downs and i want you guys to kind of give your own intro but i actually have like a theme song that i was uh, gonna play great <laughs> <laughs> i'm on a riddering um so you guys go ahead and introduce yourselves. Just kind of talk about how long you've been married. Maybe give a little tiny snippet of background on where you're from, that type of thing, how you yeah. came to Radiant. Can yeah. I go first? Yes. <laughs> um, I'm Natasha Downs, and I'm married to Sean. We've been married for nine years. And we came to Radiant almost a year ago. Sean is the pastor of production. And pastor Sean. Pastor Sean. It's great. Great title. <laughs> and um, I help lead worship, and we help with the school of worship here. So we recently moved from Kansas City. At the International House of Prayer, we were there for, I was there for 13 years. Mm-hmm. We have one little boy, Jackson, mm-hmm. and one on the way. Yep. One on the way, people. <laughs> one cooking. Yeah. <laughs> I have actually known Sean and Natasha for a while, and I am excited to kind of hear the details of your guys' testimony of healing because I don't think I've ever, like, heard it in full. Yeah, I was telling Sean, I was like, I don't think she knows all of it. I don't think I know all of it. So if you guys just want to get into it however you want to, you can talk about how how you guys found out the diagnosis, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. So like she said, we were married for nine, uh, we've been married for nine years. So we were married young. So I was 20 and Tosh was 22, I think. I always marry up. Better. You always, <laughs> always, so many times. <laughs> Every time I've done it, it's always so enough. many marriages. Um, so within the first month of our marriage, Natasha, Natasha just started getting really sick. Her health started to decline. We didn't really know what it was, but it was basically she was just itchy from head to toe, and there was no like rash or anything. She was just like really itchy all the time. We didn't know what it was, and she was not sleeping at all. And then there was a bunch of other weird things, so we didn't really know what was going on. So we went to to a bunch of doctors, and we basically went doctor to doctor for about six months. And every doctor sent us to another doctor, and they no one knew what was going on. They just kept treating us for different things, and there was no success and like no diagnosis. So then we ran into a doctor, not literally, we didn't hit him with a car or anything, but we, we got connected <laughs> oh with the doctor. And uh, he thought it was allergies. That was food allergy based. So a very highly restrictive diet, hundreds of different supplements. And it was all to hopefully reverse what he thought was like a lot of internal infections and allergies and a bunch of stuff that was going on. So we did that for about 18 months. And at this time, Natasha's health is just getting worse and worse and worse. And so now that doctor's thinking this is not allergies because you would have already been seeing Mm -hmm. results. So he sends us to what he kind of said, you know, in a funny way, was like a real doctor. (laughs) I'm not a real doctor. (laughs) I've been treating you for a year. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so we go to see a general practitioner. We believe in homeopathy. Yeah, we believe believe in eating healthy. Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes. (laughs) So he ran all of his own tests and they were all inconclusive. So we're about you know, we're about two years into this. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was to the point where doctors would take her lab work to like conventions and like talk to other doctors. Oh, wow. Like, have you ever seen anything <clears> like <throat> this? I mean, there, it, her lab work was just off the chart. So it was confounding people. We couldn't figure it out. So then our next specialist, immediately they admit her into ICU because at this point, oh her, her sickness is so normal to us, but she's fevering. She's night sweats. She's She has a... We know, we know basically a growth the size of my fist like on her neck and it's affecting her ability to breathe because it's pushing into her esophagus all this crazy stuff that but we've been doing this for so many years that it was just like well this is just Natasha being sick so th- when we go up to the this specialist they're like you need to be in ICU right now wow and so we yeah we were just coming for a doctor's appointment we were just showing a doctor's appointment <laughs> we don't have a hospital Red alert. <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah we don't have a hospital we weren't prepared for anything we're just kind of like uh you know I guess yeah I guess you do have like 102 degree fever I guess that's you know for the last three You're months walking I guess around like a dead person <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah basically. basically and oh so my gosh. um so 
by that time, so we're in ICU and all of those specialists that we had appointments for, for the, they all were in the same room at the same time. And they're all talking to each other. Like mm -hmm. these greatest minds are kind of like, okay, this is what I think. Okay, this is what you think, blah, blah, blah. And they do tests and some biopsies. And so that was how we were able to get our definitive answer. Finally, after three years, then they diagnosed her with uh, stage 4B Hodgkin's lymphoma, which stage 4B is the last step. And then you die, basically, because <sighs> it's throughout her entire body. So it's mm -hmm. a cancer of the blood and of specifically the lymph nodes. And uh, it's now in her heart, liver, spleen. They took a test and it was just in her entire body. So that's kind of when we, that's how we found out is, uh, is about three years in, in that moment. Um, so. Yeah. Wow. And first three years of marriage. <laughs> first three years of marriage. Yeah. Whoa. Like, yeah. That yes. was our, yeah. it was all within this, like, you know, how long, what, when were we married before the symptoms started happening? It was probably like two days kind of a thing. It yeah. was just like yeah. immediately into our marriage. It, it started like, a little bit before oh we goodness. got married, but it wasn't yeah. crazy. It really like exploded when we got yeah. back from our honeymoon. It was yeah. like, what yeah. is happening? Right so now? did you, so did you feel like you had maybe like very small symptoms bef before you guys yeah. got married? Okay. Yeah. It, okay. Like then I it would just be a little itchy. And then all of a sudden when we got back from our honeymoon, it just like, it just broke loose. Yeah. It was crazy. Can you guys talk about like how in those moments of, I mean, this is a three year period, yeah. those moments where it just all comes to a head, it just peaks. What were your prayers? What, how did you guys relate to each other? Yeah, it was hard. Like there were a lot of days where we would feel hopeless, but the mm -hmm. Lord was really kind in the way that if I was feeling hopeless, Sean would have extra hope that mm -hmm. day or vice versa. What I love looking back on that season is like we never stayed in those places. And um, it's something I'll probably talk about at the end too, but like it was okay. Like the Lord was okay where I, where I was and where I had questions and where I didn't understand like why, why it was happening, but we didn't stay in that place. Mm -hmm. the, like the Lord always brought us out of that like pit of like, I don't get this. Like you promised like that we would have like a good marriage and like this is in sickness or in health is supposed to happen when you're 70, right. not 20. Yeah. And this is not what we signed up for. We fought a lot just because we weren't even mad at each other. We we're just mad at the circumstance. Like yeah. we don't know why this is happening. So we're just angry and we only have each other right now. So it was super hard. Our prayer life was for sure tested. I just feel like I just ask the Lord for help every day. And mm -hmm. I am like, that's a valuable prayer. It counts. It was a real prayer. Mm -hmm. And he really did help. I feel like we had grace when we needed it um, and strength when we needed it, but it still wasn't, it was so, it was just messy yeah. and hard, but Very beautiful. Well. When you look back, I'm mm -hmm. like, it was beautiful. Like we really chose to love him in that place. And I would, we were at the International House of Prayer at that time. And so I would gain all the strength that I could to go sing in the prayer room for two hours. And that kept my heart in a safe place too. of just, I had to declare the goodness of the Lord, yeah. even though I didn't see the goodness of the Lord in my life <laughs> at that point. And like, I can honestly say we're not offended with the Lord. Mm -hmm. We love the Lord more. We love each other more. Mm -hmm. And we learn to communicate and to wrestle through hard things together, not just individually, but together as a couple. So mm -hmm. it was like, intense marriage <laughs> counseling <laughs> birth by fire but, uh, yeah it's like we had to go through it ourselves like and we had a few people speaking into us but like yeah. nobody could really relate with what we were going through so yeah. we felt pretty alone in that yeah point. I mean it was probably some of the darkest moments of our time but also you know we look back and like I would never wish this situation on anybody but I'm actually thankful that we went through the situation because Tosh is a different person and I'm a different person than like going through those three years together. And mm -hmm. there's like a, there's a depth and a realness that we know about each other and not about the Lord, just from going through the intense crucible of conflict and, and, and emotional pain. I mean, we've, it was a, it was a book of Job moment for sure. And, and just having just like, she talked about this, the raw intensity. I remember just hearing her pray, crying, but her mm -hmm. prayers are just help. Like you can do this in an instant. You yeah. can heal me right now. Help. Why aren't you doing it? And you have to really wrestle with like the goodness of God and like the faithfulness of God in that season. And I remember thinking as a husband, like all I want to do is fix you and all I want to do is help you. And I can't, why can't I do it? And why won't you do it? And mm -hmm. there was just so much of just more than just sitting in a class and hearing someone talk about God. There was like, I, I was in a trench and she was in the trench, like we're in the middle of a battle trying to figure out who are you. And yeah. like there's a there was a realness and a raw intensity to like 
the feelings that we went through. Yeah. So, I, I mean, talk about how you started treatment. Yeah. I mean, yeah. who recommended it? How much treatment? How long was the time? Yeah. So I had an oncologist that I was given and he was like, okay, you need to start chemo right away. Mm -hmm. You'll want to look into possibly like freezing eggs because there's a great chance you'll never be able to have children. And so we were kind of like, well, insurance doesn't cover it. And then my doctor was like, you cannot wait to do that. Like yeah. we got to start treatment right away. And so we were like, all right, we're just going to trust the Lord and see what happens and give that part of our hearts to the Lord. And at that point, we're like really focused on just getting me better too. So it wasn't like it was devastating, but also like, all right, we got to like yeah. figure out how to get Natasha better first anyways. So started chemo and within two months, all of my cancer symptoms were gone. I was running four or five miles every day. I was working out. I felt amazing. Like mm -hmm. I felt strong. I felt like my body was like whole and new and the doctors were like you must have people praying for you because <laughs> we don't see these kinds of results the doctors and said that? yeah that's amazing like, like well people. I actually have a whole prayer room yeah, full whole 24 of 7 prayer room <laughs> it's called the international house of prayer have you heard of you it <laughs> so um I mean we were just so covered in prayer and yeah within two months I felt great I still had to like finish out the six months of chemo we would go once every two weeks so when we look back at like the treatment time, it doesn't feel stressful either. Like yeah. it, mm -hmm. because there was such a noticeable change, we were like, this is really working. Mm -hmm. And we got a phone call like soon after and the lady, the nurse was like, you're cancer free. And we were like, wait, what? <laughs> and so we, we ended up calling yeah, her back because call the way she communicated it was are kind of weird. Saying so that? are you sure that I am cancer free? And, <laughs> <You call> <laughs> and she's like, yes, you are cancer free. <laughs> yeah. I was like, Okay, and we wow. honestly didn't even know what to do with ourselves. Yeah. We we're like, okay, we need to celebrate. How are we going to celebrate? Mm -hmm. Like, what do we even talk about? Because for three years, this is all we've talked about is sickness. Mm -hmm. And the next meal that we need to make, that's gluten-free, dairy-free, soy-free, yeah. <laughs> whatever. And it's just been so consuming for so long. And all of a sudden, like, this isn't a big part yeah. of our lives. Mm -hmm. So now what? Now what, yeah. What do we yeah. do now? Like, wh what, what do we do with our lives? Like, because we've... Everything we knew about the Lord, about each other, about ministry, it just changed. And mm -hmm. it was just like, what do we want to do? Yeah. Like, this is it. Did it feel kind of like a, like a, like a second chance, kind of like a new lease? Yeah, it did. I... Tosh was talking about getting a tattoo. <laughs> she was like, like, no joke. And I was like, wow, she's feeling. There was Whoa. a there was a few months afterwards. Oh, that I was a little nervous about what we were gonna do. Yeah, <laughs> she's gonna shave her head anyway. Yeah. <laughs> it, still I don't there. need it. Yeah. If you know you're done. Right? She's like, no, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> yeah, I, there definitely was. There was a relearning of even myself. Like I didn't lose myself in the process, but my personality was definitely sure, dumbed yeah. down, and especially with not sleeping, like. I just felt like a zombie for three years, just kind of walking around, mm. trying my best to like survival mode. <clears throat> yeah, you you didn't think anything past two days from now. You're only yeah. thinking that day. So it was kind of fun to. I feel like even now I'm still not in that place, but mm -hmm. I think there it's just a perspective that I've been given just by walking through it. It's like, all right, like what what do I want to do? Who am I? Mm -hmm. Like still like that self discovery after being sick for so long, mm -hmm. um, and I feel like. I got myself back, but I feel like there's a whole new part of me too that we I gained and yeah. even Sean gained with mm -hmm. himself as well. So yeah, yeah, parts of you that were just kind of unlocked is yeah. the process that you're sure. through. Yeah. And so, we have a child and yeah. another child so, on yeah. the way. <laughs> yeah, so to kind of cap that story, like we were told you're not gonna have kids and um, and then we, so we wait for a couple of years after treatment just to kind of actually have like our honeymoon, our first year together <laughs> mm -hmm. kind of thing normal where, marriage. <laughs> where we can actually like yeah, do normal things. <laughs> and, um, and then we, you know, we, we took a, we took some tests and they're like, there's nothing that we see that could be hindering you from having kids. So why don't you try? So we tried one time and we immediately were pregnant and it was like a great pregnancy. Like, like he's super healthy. Yeah. He's awesome little guy. And she was super healthy during the whole time. Yeah, and so, pregnancy. so then we're like, Oh, I wonder if it's a fluke. And like, you know, <laughs> do you like, was it just like a random thing? So we tried again and we got pregnant again and we're mm -hmm. like, well, this is crazy. Like it's a yeah. miracle from the Lord. Yeah. And so. Yeah. He is. I mean, he is a living, breathing promise. Yeah. He's special. Mm -hmm. He's so special. Yeah. And that I didn't, I didn't know that part of the story. Yeah. I didn't know, you know, you never, I feel like that's something that people don't think about a lot is the infertility that often comes yeah. with treatment. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's really, really special. Yeah. And then another promise on the way. That's yep. so cool. Yeah. 
and you guys believed the Lord for that, and you just gave yeah. it. You just gave it up yeah. Yeah. to Him. You're like, you know what? We can't even deal with this right for now. Sure. Yeah. We don't even have the time. We don't have <laughs> totally. the money. We're just gonna give it to you. Mm-hmm. That is incredible. Yeah, yeah. that's a testament. And, and I could like do a whole other podcast just <laughs> on like the financial part of it as well. Yeah, I was gonna. Where I mean, for for half the time, all the way up until the point where she was admitted into ICU, we were uninsured. So I was, this was before Obamacare. So no yeah. one would cover her cause she had a preexisting condition. Oh so <laughs> I was paying for everything out of pocket, uh, all of like the, the natural diet and the supplement, all that stuff was out of pocket. And there was just hundreds and hundreds of financial miracles that like we literally did not have the money coming in, but somehow that money came in and paid for yeah. everything. And then I was trying to get onto like Medicaid, like a state insurance that because they were they had to cover her. So a week before we get admitted into ICU, we get a card in the mail that says, "Hey, you're fully covered." And I'm like, "What does that mean?" Like anything the doctor says is necessary is fully covered. So we like go to the doctor, I'm like, "Let's do it, <laughs> anything and everything." We've got the magic so that's, card. Yeah, we got the black card. And so <laughs> that was then. That's when they set us up with a specialist, and then we get admitted to ICU. So. Then we start cancer treatment, and yeah. then right after cancer treatment, so after six, so that literally a six month time frame, then our insurance plan changes, and it's no longer full coverage, and there's this premium. It was, and nothing changed. It was literally just that six months. It was a miracle from the Lord, and uh, we paid ten dollars for our ICU bill, which is like her five days in the hospital, yeah. and zero dollars for everything else. They even back paid like stuff that we had paid. Uh, on our own pocket. <laughs> so like chemo is, I mean, I asked the lady and you know, for a chemo, hopefully she doesn't get fired from listening to this. But, uh, I was like, how much, <laughs> how much would this cost? And she's like, she's like, well, we don't even know. It's hundreds and hundreds of thousands yeah. of dollars. And then, and I was like, so I was getting bills. She's like, oh, don't worry. She's like, there's some things that your insurance is not covering. So we're just writing it off for you. And I was like, I was like, how do, do I need to like do something? She's like, nope, I have your name written on a post-it note just on my computer. I was like, please never lose that post-it yes. note. I'll never get fired. <laughs> like, and so they Thank just, you. they just absolved like all of our costs. And so there was just so many things that were just completely covered for all of our appointments. Yeah. Um, her, her pregnancy was completely covered. I mean, it was just, wow. we didn't pay a dime. So we had, we walked away with this with zero medical debt. You know, for three years of intense medical yeah. treatment, yeah. And so it's a major like milestone to where when we're like, you know, we're praying for a car, praying for a house, praying for a bill, praying for whatever. And then you know, I remember like, so in the moment, I'm like, God, are you faithful? Like, are you gonna mm-hmm. break through? Then I'm like, but you did it for so many years. Like, mm-hmm. there's like, how can I like? I need to remember like your faithfulness because in and it's, it's literally story after story after story. And so we think about faithfulness through pain, faithfulness through. Um, trial, faithfulness through finances, like this, all those things. And like, this was a major like milestone. You know, I know Tosh wants to talk about a little bit, but there's this idea of, of the process we went through. Like in the moment, we were always thinking about what's this unto? Like, what, like, is, is she going to get healed? And it's going to like a bunch of people are going to get saved or is it going to be done? And then we're going to move into something. But it was the process and the story that we went through. And it's literally changed our lives. And we realized the people that we can talk to and impact, and there's even our own faith. You know, for three years we went through this and we've seen the goodness of God and he's the same God and he's not going to change. And yeah. So. yeah. To somebody that is not even necessarily going through cancer treatment, yeah. but is dealing with illness yeah. and like the hopelessness yeah. that you experience through a debilitating illness, especially when you don't even know what it is, yeah. what... What specific prayers did you pray? What helped you get through? I mean, you guys said you couldn't think two days ahead. You can't plan anything. You can't go anywhere because you're just kind of stuck where you are. And how would you encourage someone? How would you even pray for someone that's going through that? Pain is pain no matter the source. So I think this, what I'm about to say is applicable to anyone Mm -hmm. going through emotional pain or physical pain. Um, but something I learned to do is take my pain and turn it into conversation. I feel like a lot of times we feel pain and we tend to shut down and we're like, this is too hard. I'm not going to talk to the Lord about this. And I think there's some of that. I think there's some of we view God wrongly. And so we're like, well, we can't be angry with God. We have to put on a happy face and say the right thing and have these beautiful, elaborate prayers and make sure when we come before him, were well pleasing and that something that he delights in and I learned like us coming raw and open and honest is what he wants that's what he delights in and like that's what abiding 
with him and in him is, is that conversation. And so my main thing that I learned is like, I have to take that pain and turn it into conversation. I can't stop talking to him and I can come with my anger. I can come with my frustration. I can come with my confusion. I can come with my hopelessness and it's super messy and feels ugly to me, but the Lord is like, no, this is beautiful. Like I already know it. I already see it. And I think so often we're like, all right, I got to like just fix, fix myself and make sure I look good. Um, when I talk to him and the Lord's like, no, like I want the honesty of your heart and yeah, just come as you are. And I want to carry this burden with you. Mm -hmm. And it's not something that we're meant to carry alone. Yeah. So I would say that. And even we, we condemn ourselves in those places and like, you're not loving Jesus enough right now, or you don't have enough faith right now. So when I pray for other people, I just try to remind them like that they're doing a good job yeah. and that the Lord's pleased with where they're at. And you don't have to be at this certain level of faith for the Lord to break through and answer on your behalf. Like he really, he loves small faith and he answers mm-hmm. small faith. And yeah, I think he, he loves the honesty of our hearts and he wants it. And so I think that's something that impacted me the most. And that is my like message to others. Mm-hmm. You just be honest with him. He really can handle it. Like he's not yeah. freaking out because you're freaking out. Like he's very confident in who he is and he won't like mess up or mm-hmm. falter just because your faith is faltering and it's okay to have hard days. So yeah, yeah. it's great. Well, Thank you guys for being here. Yeah, thank you. For the listeners, these are two of my dearest friends, and they have championed my own marriage and the things that they're talking about. Their testimony has directly impacted my life, the experience that they've had, and how they relate to other people has directly impacted my life and and my husband's life. So I just want to thank you guys from a very special, deep place in my heart. (laughs) I want to thank you especially for that. And I'm so thankful that I got to sit down with you guys and hear the entire story in its its fullness and full timeline of everything. It is a huge testament to the Lord's faithfulness and goodness. So thank you. This has been Radiant Stories. I'm Ira Glass. (laughs) (laughs) This has been Radiant Stories. Click subscribe to get a brand new story delivered to you every Monday.